Today I'm very, very happy to attend this function. Why? Because some, some of us who are witnesses of the democratization process and constitution, constitutionalization, we were wondering why did DP separate from NRM? Because they were partners between 1986 to 1996, I think. And I think Uganda has never recovered from that breakup. So, Chairman Mao, we are very happy that you have that you have back to that principle that we we had. Because the first NRM government was composed mainly of DP members. I call it homecoming because I'm now back on the ground. I've been away for 12 years and I've been seeing a lot of things happening. So Mao is back and I'm going to be mobilizing. And I'm going to move not only in Acholi but all over Uganda preaching unity. Because what we have done is about unity for a purpose. On this, I can... Uh explain a little bit, being the deputy legal advisor of the party, what normally happens in the Democratic Party if there is anything to be done, especially on policy matters. One, an idea is, 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 is formed, and when it is formed, it is brought before the neck. The neck will deliberate on it. After the neck deliberating on it, it will go to the National Council. The National Council makes decisions which can bind the party. Now, on policy matters like where you are joining or when you are going to merge with the party or you are doing a coalition with the party which, uh, which needs to, uh, to do a merger with you, there must be a delegates conference. And when all of those happens, there must be a minute. I am surprised that Ugandans are talking about corporations, DP cooperating with the NRM when there is no minute of those very important organs of the party. I don't know whether there is a, a minute from the NRM. I don't know. But from the Democratic Party, there is no minute which authorized the, 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 the Honorable right, uh, the Honorable Nobat Mao and the Secretary General to append signatures on a cooperation agreement. That is what I wanted you to put in, in black and white and in bold. In the absence of those, there cannot be anything like a cooperation. And as you are well aware, the Political Organizations Act only talks about a merger and coalition. Anything less is not there. So. Whatever was done is questionable. In continuation, but with the individuals, no but Mao, Gerard Siranda, and likes as individuals. That is exactly what I wanted to explain. The reverse was to be true. Then in his welcome remarks, he would have welcomed the DP to the NRM. Museven made a right turn, which in our view is politically wrong turn when he lectures about the powers of the Bachwezi dynasty. While the Bachwezi had great influence on uh, uh, an influence of conquest and power over other organizations and tribal groupings, over pasture. pasture, since they were nomadic herdsmen moving up and down, and good example by nature as primitive accumulators of wealth. President Seven is short of giving the reasons for the collapse of the Bachwez, because that kingdom collapsed for your information. Because he continues to harbor the nostalgia of a new Chwez dynasty in modern times, he refers to the Bachwez widen to the Bachwez widen widening their dynasty, not because they wanted to write 
to unite people, but because they always yearned to acquire territory to, for sole purpose of grazing. of grazing their animals. We still see them grabbing land all over this country for grazing land, uh, minerals, and storage of ill-gotten wealth by the power they wield over the weak in our country. Uh, on, on the 22nd, President Museveni should have addressed the people in Gulu. And as you have heard from our release, he even addressed them in some actually dialect. Apoyo, Apoyo Bino, meaning thank you for coming, which means that this was not a letter just for the consumption of the minister, Nobat Mao. It was for the consumption of the audience which was gathered in Gulu on the homecoming event. Therefore, this message was sent to the minister so that the minister could transfer the same message to the people of Acholi from the president that he serves. And for us, we are vindicated. We are vindicated because we have been ridiculed by very many quarters of intellectual and elite, including the media, when we said the Democratic Party was never for sale, and an individual could go and serve in the NRM government cannot go with the party without the party having decided. That is what we have always been saying for the last one year. And today we are being vindicated by President Museveni himself without shame, writing to his minister and welcoming him to his party. When we talked about the Democratic Party having had no cooperation agreement with Mr. Museveni, people ridiculed us. They called us names and so on. They said we were sold. We explained ourselves that the media should not really be the one to push somebody down our throat. It's not, not one of us. And President Seven was a little bit careful here. He welcomed an individual, the individual of Nobat Mao, to the NRM. He was welcomed. Now, for you, members of the Fourth Estate, if at all he were, if there was a cooperation agreement, his language would have been different. He would have said, we are welcoming DP to NRM. He said, we welcome Ladit Mao to NRM. And I think that solves our problem. And we are vindicated, and we shall have a drink in the evening to celebrate this fallacy that has been propounded by the media from time to time. So that one, one of our problems has been solved. However, he continues to hobnob with the Democratic Party as if there was a cooperation agreement in his other wrong turns. You cannot talk about a cooperation agreement between DP and the NRM, yet you are talking about cooperation with individuals such as Joseph Bugwawo. The president must be informed that the Democratic Party is an institution with framework under which it works. We have a constitution, and the constitution obeys the constitutional order of the country. The president should not have been fooled to think that he signs an agreement that has not been sanctioned by the party organs, and then he accepts that as a, 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 a party thing. Therefore, he makes right and wrong turns in his communication, but we are here to enable him to put uh, his communication in balance of probabilities because we are continuing to communicate to enable him to understand the mistake that he made when he was duped that the party called the Democratic Party is signing an, uh, uh, a cooperation agreement with him. He was duped. And we can ne never be vindicated ever more than this before. I want to expound a little bit on this Chuezi dynasty thing.
You know, Museveni says he's a Machuezi. Yeah? Says he's a Machuezi, and Machuezi are very powerful people. You know, they were uniting people all over the country. There was a missed opportunity when the Chuez dynasty collapsed. He's teaching us history. Of course, he's a, he's a teacher of history. But we also studied some history. His, his history itself. We have some knowledge of the history and how the Chuez dynasty collapsed. They overstretched their means. They were conquerors, primitive accumulators of wealth, land, pasture, etc. So they were using that prowess in order to subdue all communi communities in this country. It was not for purposes of uniting this country. It was for purposes of conquering. President Museveni is using the analogy and nostalgia of the old Chuezi dynasty to impress it upon the people of Gulu, the Acholi people, that the, the Chuezi dynasty is here, is back here, through your own people. Not because they, he wants to unite them, but because he wants to conquer them again through a protege called Nobat Mao. And you know, sometimes he's truthful. But because the philosophy is not for everybody to understand, the, Mr. Mao and the, the actual people who are listening and who are letting may not have known the communication of the president. He's saying that the Bachuezi are now back. The Bachuezi were stretching even to, 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 to the north, including Guru. Of course, he, he mourns the, the collapse of the Chuezi dynasty. The Chuezi dynasty was the uniting people, and he, he celebrates them for uniting people. It was not for uniting people. It was for conquering them. He's now telling them, we are conquering you again through Mao, a protege. But he does not forget the idea of hatred for other organized kingdoms including that of Uganda, Bunyoro, Toro, Ankole, and so on. He always has something to, to hit them about. He calls them ignorant, egocentric. We are educating Mr. Museveni that the Bachuezi having collapsed, those organized kingdoms outlived the Bachuezi, and we don't see them organized anywhere. But they somehow regrouped picked up guns, get, got some knowledge in the in entire school. They, they, they went to Dar es Salaam, and then they captured power through Fronasa, and then they are here amassing wealth again. The, 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 the choice are back on it again. They are acquiring land. They, they are amassing wealth. They are grabbing land left, right, and center all over the country, all over the country. This time it is not because of pasture alone but it is because of mineral wealth and keeping there the money they have looted out of government for the last 40 years they have been in power. So Mr. Museveni is uh, putting the Bachuezi, people with the Bachuezi decency. In Catch-22, I don't know why he's afraid of describing himself as a tribe so that he envelops himself into the kind of a dynasty and then say they are here to stay. I think that he's getting it wrong. That nostalgia will never work once that their prowess was overstretched, once people realized that they were there as primitive accumulators of wealth, they just wanted to amass a lot of land for purposes of grazing. The people had to make self-determination and fought to them and they collapsed and disappeared. They can continue to be here with guns in modern times. They can continue to amass wealth. The people have understood who, who are taking their land and for what purpose. The Ugandan people will resist this and they will take their land back. They will take their wealth back. They will take their power back. In the way they defeated them, it is the same way we shall defeat them and we reclaim our power. For us in the Democratic Party, we shall reclaim our Democratic Party. And we are demanding of him and his protege that the Democratic Party was never for sale. We want our party because we must wrestle for power. 
we must influence society, and we, we are here to stay. The values on which the Democratic Party was built are not the same values on which NRM was built. And this is my last point. For those of you who do not know why the Democratic Party was formed, center-right values are values about human rights for people to explore their God-given potential. We respect human rights, and we also respect people who have, out of their God-given potential, amassed wealth. The communists, which, an idea, which is the ideology President Seven believes in, believe in control of not only human beings, but also wealth. And the center-left party, such as that of UPC, so to educate Mr. Mao and the community that was listening to President Museveni that parties were formed alongside uh, religious affiliation was, is a wrong old school idea that was espoused in, in Chiang Kwanzi, which they were using to indoctrinate people so that they can hate parties and how they were formed. How then do you explain that the Protestant influence of the Democratic Party in Eastern Uganda? How, do you, how, how else do you explain the Protestant influence in the Democratic Party among the Banyankole, the Bahima? These parties were formed on a firm ideological basis of honesty, truth, pursuit of justice, social justice, and justice for everybody, including economic justice. Those who formed their political party with no ideology is the NRM. The NRM has no ideology. They talk, they talk about Pan-Africanism and so on. Which Pan-Africanism we don't see. Their ideology is bonded together because of wealth and ill-gotten wealth. Once you want a job, that is their ideology. They will give you a job so long as you support them. Once you, are, you, 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 you have a problem, they want to solve that problem for you so that you, you belong to them. Just to, car, to cover up, to cover themselves up, to cover the ill-gotten wealth that they have amassed. Then they can say, now we have got also an actual among us. We also have a Mtoro among us. We also have a, 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 a Mnyoro among us. But a small clique of people, that is the way they are holding us hostage. And he cannot hide about the history of the Bachoezi to hide this inequality. We shall continue to expose them ideologically, intellectually, and also. Thank you. I think almost everything has been said by the current speakers, Dr. Lurume and uh, Honorable Lumu, have preempted almost everything that I had to talk about. It's true, like I said recently in the last press conference that we had, that Mao is no longer DP. Mao is NRM. Actually, he's typically NRM. He doesn't express any justice, no truth, nothing, despite being a minister of truth and of justice and constitutional affairs. Actually, I related him, or I related to the actions he's doing, to somebody that is under rape, or somebody that is being sodomized unwillingly. I related those actions to that. Because there is no way you can move a party and take it to an RM without, without the members accepting. It is typical rape. It's sodomizing people without their will. And we made it clear. And we have allowed. And I thank the President of the Republic of Uganda for saying, welcome, Mao. Because in the NRM, you can do all this. You can wake up, say anything, intimidate members of parliament, intimidate the army, intimidate people that are on their lands, steal everything, take the money from the government coffers whenever you want, go to hospital without drugs and you tell them it's because it is, you cannot also come and tell us you're tired of being a president. You can do everything because in NRM all that is okay. According to the president, actually, he says the, the country split on three grounds. 
three wrong turns. One was because we failed to reunite against those that had come to civilize us, thereby allowing slave trade. Two, we accepted to be divided on religious grounds, Protestants, Islam, and then the Catholic. Then three, along political parties. But we are here now. We are split along those lines. We are not looking for the solutions of what we would have done then. That was the history. That is what we went through then. Then the whites came. Then the, religi the, the re different religions came. Then we, uh, political parties came. We are here now. And we want to solve the issues of Uganda today. The issues of Uganda today, or the only political issue of Uganda today, is not a president that has lived for 40 years. Le has led for 40 years. Actually, that is very simple to understand. Okay, let us, all those were wrong turns. The, the, but the basic wrong turn we have today is a 40 year rule. That is one. Somebody that does not accept anyone or in, to be, does not, okay, somebody that does not want the political field to be inclusive for everyone to, be, to share their memory, their ideas, and then proceed. But for everyone to be under them, whoever thinks of being a, politi a politician in Uganda should be under the armpit of the NRM. And under Mukulum Seveni, His Excellency. You should be under him. You should do everything under him. Everyone would admire being in NRM. But what, why don't we accept? Let us balance the wrongs and the rights. Why don't we see the corruption, massive death, raiding other people's lands in southern Sudan and Congo and Somalia? Why don't we see? I was recently with a, 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 a chap, 22 year old, that stopped in P2 and doesn't, has never bought a phone for themselves. In Uganda here, down in Bali, in my constituency, a young man, 22 year old, I asked him, do you have a phone number? He told me I've never held a phone. And even he has never stood anywhere to buy it. And that is 2022. We are living the modern times. We are not living history. Mukulum 7 is history itself. At 85, we cannot say that what you're doing is commensurate to what we are today. You have, you have outlived the technology. You have outlived the economic, the social economic transformation that we, have to, we are supposed to be doing today. All of you here are, 30, are in your 30s and 20s. Let us the 40s. We cannot be le led by a leader of an era that does not understand ours. That is where the problem of Uganda is. That's the wrong turn that we are making. Being led by somebody that does not understand our today. The te technology is faster. You can hardly use TikTok. That's where we are. WhatsApp, that's where we are. Twitter, that's where we are. You can hardly, actually, we are, the world is a global world today. You can hardly market from here and you market in the U.S. You are a consultant in the U.K., in Australia, but you're seated at home. That's where we are. This, the, the, the world is revolving at a very terrific speed that a person at 85 cannot chase it. You cannot. It is not about unity. The unifying factors of, of, of the world are very different. The global factors that are running the world today are very different from Mao. You can take your Mao in your armpit. That is okay. But what we are looking at and the leader we are looking for today, 2023, 2024, 2025, is not the leader that the NRM has. Maybe it has other leaders that might be good, but not that one at the moment. So what are we saying? We are here today. We might have taken very many wrong turns. 
But today, we want to make a right. We want to make a, the country go forward. What do we say? Back in the day, we had Democratic Party, where everything was done under truth and justice. Bazaar is given out equally. The UID sowing seeds of democracy. So many people have been exonerated. People who were saying that Radit Mao crossed the NRM, I think the fountain of honor said it clearly. We didn't say it because President Mao would say that those people are blackmailing me. Then Honorable Minister Mao should exonerate us. It's not we saying that he went to NRM. It is the president himself, the fountain of honor, who confessed it. Because he has been going around, he's saying that these people are tying me to NRM. Me, I just made a, a cooperation with NRM. But today, the fountain of honor is emphasizing it. But I want to overlook that. When you see what happened in Iguru, most especially the Kaunda grounds, maybe to give you a bit of history, Kaunda grounds has accommodated the three presidents from north. Uh, Obote, the late, was a president from north, and he was using Kaunda grounds for celebrations. Tito Okero was a president from north, and whenever he could go to Guru, he would use Kaunda grounds. And then President Idamini Dada, he is a president, he was a president from north, and whenever he could go to north, he would use Kaunda grounds. This was a mocking ceremony, whereby the President Museven wanted to show people from north that if you still believe in the presidency, it is far gone, you are at the level of the ministry. I pity the great spirits of Obote, Ida Amin, and Oito Jok. They fought for presidency, but their son has reduced that, that region to the level of a ministry. That's why he had to send the brother to witness the mockery. The whole North was mocked that you can no longer be presidents, but you can be ministers. I pity great men like Oite Ojok. I pity great men like Obote. I pity great men like Amini Dada. I pity them because thus the far their son has degraded them. Therefore, but I credit them for their peace. Otherwise, they would have disorganized that function the Oranya way. But they kept the peace. <laughs> so if you overlook, if I can overlook the function, that's the best I can comment about it. Then secondly, president is a fountain of honor constitutionally. And when you are talking of primitivity, and you're talking of the primitive kings, primitive cultural leaders, these are cultural leaders who preserved the Lake Victoria, he's destroying today. The cultural leaders is calling primitive. The cultural leaders preserved the Mabira. Those are the primitive leaders. I don't know who is primitive then. The cultural leaders he kept the country, he's dividing. The cultural leaders preserved the Karuma. They preserved the Rera. And today, Rera is being taken. I don't know when you look at, when you put us at the weighing scale of primitivity. I don't know who is primitive here. Primitive. Who is primitive? So when president, I think the fountain of honor, the advisors, I think his advisors, the butcher man. We should consult one of his advisors, I think more in the butcher man, to, 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 to translate for him or to define for him what exactly the primitivity is. Otherwise, in his letter, he might be meaning the vice versa of primitivity. Because if you are talking of people of 17th century who preserved what you are destroying today, and you are standing on the land in the north provoking the leaders, and then at the end of the day, 
you're talking about primitivity. I think when you look at the whole function, it was mockery and it was a vice versa statement. So I think president should know and should consult the advisors. Then lastly, DP, yeah, I'm advised there is another advisor called Kusasira. Yeah. You can also consult Kusasira. As for the Democratic Party, I think president is aware of everything. If he chooses to work, you know, one role of a president is to protect the constitution. The constitution puts their political parties. And political parties have constitutions. And DP is very clear. You only cease, you cease being a member of the Democratic Party when you cross to another party. And the president says it clearly here, that you are welcome to NRM. Therefore, you should consult his advisor, Butcherman, that according to the, to the Constitution of the Democratic Party, President Mao is no longer a member of the Democratic Party. Therefore, at this time around, I want to tell all Democratic members, wherever they are, if there has ever been a chance to rise up again or to fall down to the ditches, it is this time. It's time to choose. You can either rise up, you have, it's the time now. We are not going to mourn, though we expect so many critics. We are not going to cover our heads, though we expect so many people to make stories of us, including the press, by the way. We expect that. But I'm telling you, we are ready. We are ready to fight for Democratic Party because the difference Democratic Party has with other parties, it doesn't belong to anyone. Democratic Party belongs to DP members. 